Okay, so today we're very happy to have Yosef Urban, uh, who's going to be talking to us about combining learning and deduction over formal math corpora. So please. Mm -hmm. So hi everybody, uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'm happy to tell you something about what we do in my group in Prague. Uh, in particular, a lot of this work has been done in the recent, let's say, seven years. Uh, funded by this EIC project, AI for a reason that we have been running here for about five, six years now. So, so this is the outline, like I'll say briefly something about motivation, uh, mention computer understandable math, uh, explain or make a, sort of a summary of how we combine theorem proving with various kinds of machine learning, show you some demos, and then depending on the time, I may go into explaining like the high level, low level, and mid level ways of combining uh, like some learning based guidance with uh, deduction. And then again, like if there is more time, I could say something more about like neural based synthesis and conjecturing and auto formalization. But if I show you too many demos, then I will run out of time way, way, way before, before that. So so the very, very uh, high level motivation of what we do is automation of mathematics and let's say the, the parts of science that are related to, to mathematics. And the, the sort of high level uh, idea is that what mathematicians and probably also scientists like, like hard scientists are, are doing are algorithms that combine learning and uh, pattern matching and finding analogies uh, with some sort of deductive reasoning, some sort of deductive search, uh, search for explanations, search for proofs. And that uh, the mathematicians and the, the scientists are uh, generally very good at sort of combining the, these two, two things and that there are many interesting feedback loops between like for example failing to prove something and then learning from the failure or learning from related examples uh, inducing some high level terminology some sort of abstract uh, terminology when you do mathematics etc cetera, etc cetera. and at least when we learn math we typically absorb a lot of knowledge from various textbooks and then when we when we do math, we are also able to use a, a lot of knowledge that uh, we have studied. Uh, so the, the the sort of idea that I started to work on some like 25 years ago is to basically get a lot of um, mathematical knowledge in a form that a computer can understand uh, and then sort of try to sort of start this research uh, where we could do both the deductive uh, chains because like the, the knowledge would be sort of computer verified. So, so, so that's sort of uh, these large corpora of formal, formal mathematics that have been uh, developed, let's say in the uh, several past decades, but, but also because of the size we, we could do some interesting machine learning, uh, both, like, let's say, statistical and symbolic uh, machine learning on, on these corpora, and, and try to see how much we can emulate, for example, some student who, who learns uh, from some textbook and eventually becomes capable of solving uh, harder and harder uh, exercises or um, proving harder and harder theorems in uh, in all over these theories that he's learning. So the um, sort of one one slight introduction to formal mathematics is that it's it's this program that probably many of you know was developed like it goes back to Leibniz and then Russell created the first uh, formal foundations and there were people like Frege and Hilbert, etc., et who who were uh, basically working on this program on 
putting embedding mathematics into into symbolic logic into, into formal formal logic and you probably also know that the, the, this program has some sort of side product uh, resulted in Turing's proposal of the like universal computing machine which ended up being actually implemented and then in the 1950s 60s people actually started to think about uh, using these these symbolic uh, logic machines into uh, doing doing mathematics uh, on on them and the 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 first like famous name in in, in this um, direction is the brown who came up with a system called automath in 1960s and then there was a series of people like robin milner doing lcf andre triboz doing Mizai, boy and moore doing mq7 and cl2 my gordon doing hol Gerard yeah, doing Coke, like also doing Isabel, etc. etc. So 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 really these systems for doing um, formal proofs uh, have been developed in the let's say last 50, 60 years. And what they do is conceptually pretty simple, like you write your axioms and theorems in some sort of computer understandable parsable form. You state your inference rules uh, in, a, in a way that the computer understands what is modus ponens, for example, and then you you really write the proofs in such a way that the computer can check check the proofs. So so it sounds simple, but um, it's not simple because there is like a cognitive gap between uh, the humans trying to work in. The, the highest possible level and to omit details when the, the details are boring whereas the computer and the, the simplest proof checker requiring you to, to really do like millions or billions of uh, of the lowest level modus ponens of the lowest level uh, inference steps so 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 the research in this field which is also called like interactive theorem proving has been going on for for several decades now and I would say it's still not mainstream but there have been uh, several interesting large projects uh, in the last decade or two which sort of brought it much more to to mainstream and the developments are really interesting uh, the, the the sort of AI part of um, let's say theorem proving uh, go, goes back again quite some time so so that there is for example the, the the quarrel between the debate between Poincaré uh, and Hilbert where Poincaré was um, telling Hilbert that if he puts math in bad math into like symbolic logic and set theory then um, the mathematics will will become that in some sense like it will lose the, the sort of intuition part uh, and then an interesting person in in, in this uh, so, sort of debate is Turing who who on one hand proof on decidability and uh, on on the other hand he himself is basically the founder of the field of artificial intelligence so he has this 1950 paper where he proposes to for, for example use um, learning machines to 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 learn uh, very abstract activities like playing chess uh, and then you 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 have the, this um, uh, stream of people like, like i don't know pat langley who wrote the bacon system in, which in some sense invented the couple of laws when advised a lot we, we have that that Lennart with the uh, AM system and the Eurisco systems, which are producing some conjectures in mathematics in the case of AM. And you have people in Europe, like uh, the group in Munich, like uh, Jörg Denzinger, Stefan Schultz, etc., who, who basically started to seriously think about what it would mean to, to learn from previous proof experience, from previous uh, proofs created by automated theorem provers. Uh, so 
So long ago, my my master's thesis was about trying to do symbolic learning, this ILP, this inductive logic programming, to, to learn like explainable rules from uh, from basically mathematical corpora from uh, systems like MISAR and INPS, which are two older systems for formalizing mathematics. And let's say that since then, since like 2000, uh, we have been uh, developing a number of approaches for both symbolic, but more like statistical uh, methods how to how to learn from proofs in large formal uh, mathematical libraries and how to combine them with um, various like theorem proving methods in like various feedback loops etc etc et uh, what, what, what i uh, found also quite um, interesting is a talk by vanguard so like this Mm, talk he gave in Prague about three three years ago, when he explains like the the, the various shades of AI and in particular like, like he he sort of makes nice distinctions between what is AI, what is machine learning, what what is deep learning. Like, like my, many people today believe that AI is just deep learning, but we probably all know that it's not the case and uh, the deep learning methods can do some things but are quite bad in some other things. Uh, I, I should also say that you know, like some, some of this research is like these motivated by this big AI visions like automating verifying math and law, etc., which goes back to Leibniz or John McCarthy has a nice uh, uh, essay about how the world could look if we could uh, reasonably easily produce uh, proofs about um, some sort of common sense uh, ideas. And the, the practical impact of uh, like some sort of AI based uh, proof automation is today in, in boosting the productivity in large Mm, verification projects. Uh, so, so that's that, that's some sort of very quick uh, motivation. And now I'll tell you a bit about or give you mm, an overview of how we today combine uh, machine learning with uh, the the various uh, theorem proving and deduction methods. So, so the sort of oldest and most uh, easy one is is this sort of high level guidance of automated theorem provers. When you when somebody gave you something like a mathematical textbook written formally in a formal language that is computer understandable, and your task is to prove the next lemma or the next conjecture over given all the knowledge in, in the textbook and if you if you did that like 20 years ago over some some big uh, formal mathematical library which would have like let's say 50,000 lemmas in it and 10,000 definitions then the automated theorem theories that have been developed at that time on, on, until then would have very low chance of proving that because um, of the algorithms that they were using, which sort of uh, in some sort of brute force, like reasonably smart, but still fairly brute force way, uh, generate lemmas from, from the lemmas that are already there in the beginning. And that uh, can be very much improved if you have some way how to pre-select uh, the, the the lemmas for proving your next conjecture. So so that that that's a task which, in some sense, is similar to some sort of googling, right? Like you 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 get a query, and now you you are sort of googling your uh, set uh, of of thousands of possible lemmas for for those which are the most relevant ones, 
and those that sort of give you the highest chance of proving your next conjecture without them being too many so that they sort of do not suffocate the, the automated theorem prover uh, in uh, in how how it sort of um, infers the or sort of searches for uh, for the proof of that conjecture. So so that's what we at some point started to call premise selection. Basically, you you sort of select premises from from your large textbook to to prove the next uh, conjecture. And you you can do a lot of uh, more or less simple machine learning algorithms for that, and you can sort of combine them with the deduction and some interesting feedback loops. Uh, the the sort of very uh, technically challenging task is is the low level uh, guidance of automated theorem provers. So 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 automated theorem provers are. Uh, relatively fast and typically fairly efficiently low level implemented uh, tools that in in the best implementations like vampire e prover etc can do i don't know like maybe well let's say thousands of inferences per per second so sometimes like let's say maybe hundreds of thousands inferences per second so so now imagine you want to guide a process like that you you at each point you you have the opportunity to choose from many possible inferences and uh if you if you decide to guide it by some smart machine learning method that you have trained on many I don't know thousands millions or billions previous proof situations then if you have something like some crazy big transformer telling you what should be your choice of the next inference, uh, then you might sort of end up being extremely slow compared to the original automated theorem previous. So if the transformer gives you advice like uh, once per second or per, I don't know, 10, uh, 10 milliseconds, then, then if you if you do everything right then then that's okay but typically like you are not proving the same thing all the time so so if you just memorize them uh that will not be helpful so so typically there is some search component even with the best machine learning methods and if if you need to backtrack if you need to do search then if you 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 cannot use extremely slow like machine learning guidance for for guiding the automated theorem proofs. so so this task like the low level guidance of automated theorem proofs, is really technically challenging and quite interesting in the sense that not not every um every like uh, best uh, machine learning or deep learning methods will work for you here and then uh that there is sort of a mid-level ground when you have mm, in in some interactive theorem previous, uh, you have um, a way how to program bigger reasoning blocks for called typically tactics, uh, which mm, can be composed to to sort of Pro progress the, the proof state to advance the proof state and typically you you only apply uh, a relatively few of them compared to, to the low level inferences into which uh, they ultimately translate uh, so so let's say you might apply something like 20 to sometimes 10 sometimes 20 sometimes maybe 50 tactics and there it makes a, a lot of sense to to, to sort of guide uh, those bigger blocks by by the machine learning so so that has been quite successful in the in the recent year that people people do do this sort of mid-level uh, guidance of the interactive theorem proving uh, systems then there are like tasks like for example theory exploration when you let's say get 
some initial theory, I don't know, group theory, loop theory, etc. And then you 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 may uh, also get some ultimate conjecture you want to prove. Uh, but you you know that the ultimate conjecture is quite far and that you first need to develop the, the theory. So so theory exploration is um, basically uh, trying to find interesting conjectures, trying to prove them or disprove them, learn from that process and in some sort of guided uh, or slightly guided way, build up the theory so, so that you can prove your ultimate conjecture or a set of conjectures, et cetera. And like there are all these feedback loops that I already mentioned, like between the learning and the reasoning that are happening very often in what we do. And the, the last bullet point is this auto formalization, which is like also today uh, a task that seems to be quite approachable given like the latest advances, for example, in machine translation where you would want to have a system that takes latex written paper or um, yeah, so something less formal and tries to sort of refine it into a fully formal statements in, in one of these like, like formal uh, uh, formal math um, systems and ultimately prove it. So, so you would also try to sort of refine the high-level proof written informally by the mathematician into something that can really be proof check. So, so th this is like the overview of at least most of the methods, I would say. There, there, there are a bunch of data sets that have been created like since like basically 2000. Uh, initially, like I, I did a large data set from, from the MISAR library, like this uh, MML stands for MISAR Mathematical Library. Uh, so that's been going on for almost 20 years now. And there, there's a bunch of, of benchmarks based on that, like this MPP challenge, etc. cetera. Uh, Larry Paulson and his collaborators like Jasmine Blanchett uh, have been doing uh, similar work for Isabel and the AFP, the Archive of Formal Proofs, again, like since something like 2004, 2005. Uh, a large data set has been created by the FlySpec project, which is the formal verification of the Kepler conjecture by Tom Hales. So that, that's been going on like, like the um, AI slash theorem proving work since like 2012, et cetera, et cetera. So, so there is uh, quite a lot of data today if people are interested in, in, in doing this research. And like especially for this sort of auto formalization task uh, people are more and more looking at like the this informal or let's say semi semi-formal uh mathematical data sets like for example proof wiki which is uh informal but the, the proofs there are written uh following some sort of unified format or stacks is a similar uh mathematical corpus for that and then there is obviously archive, which contains like everything, right? So, so that's not as controlled as, as the other ones. Uh, demos. Uh, so I, I don't know how, how many of them I should do. Uh, maybe I'll show you at least a couple, at least this first one, for example. And now I think some weird things will happen. I need to switch to this and go to here and hope for the best uh-huh yeah so this sort of works let me try to increase the font size mm -hmm. and click here and increase the font size again so so this is just to show you what i'm sort of talking about so this is uh, one of the older formal math system called MISAR and a formalization of a reasonably general statement of the Pythagorean theorem in there. So you say that you have some real unitary space, some sort of Hilbert space basically, 
and you have two points in it, which would be like vectors, I guess, which are orthogonal. And then you state the, the, the equality. So if you do x plus y and it's norm squared, then it equals x norm squared plus y norm uh, squared. So that's what you expect. And then you can see some natural deduction proof after uh, the statement, which says, like, let x be some arbitrary but fixed real unitary space, let x, y be you know, some points of x. Again, you sort of fix them for the sake of the proof. You assume that they are orthogonal. And then you start deriving some lemmas. So, so you say that by the definition of orthogonality, we can derive that x scalar product y equals uh, zero. And then you continue like by the definition of um, what it means to be a real unitary space, like what it means to have a scalar product in real unitary space. You know that if you take a vector, in this case, x plus y, and do scalar product with itself, it's greater or equal zero, et cetera, et cetera. So, so you sort of do these uh, steps always referring to uh, to the database of definitions and theorems that you already have formalized. Uh, and ultimately, you, you sort of derive the, uh, the equality that you want to do. So, so this is, uh, you, you, you would say, pretty standard proof, uh, like I would say about 20 lines for, uh, for the written by the human formalizer in this case. So, uh, for, for about two years, we have been now running a large um, reinforcement learning loop where we take uh, one of the best automated theorem provers called eProver. And uh, let me maybe show you, show you the slide related to it. That I'm showing the demo. Uh -huh. So this would be the slide. Uh, so, so, so there is about 60,000 problems in this library. And the, the e-prover uh, by itself without any learning uh, from its previous successes, like by just running the heuristics which were pre-programmed into it, can, can prove about 15,000 of these, like let's say 60,000 problems automatically in 10 seconds. And we, we take these 15,000 proofs and we train some sort of machine learner that sort of guides the inferences. And we, we plug this uh, machine learner into eProver and then we run eProver on these 60,000 problems again. And we do it in two different ways. Like one is that we only run it with the machine learner and the other one, that, that's this first one. And the other one is that we combine the advice given by the machine learner with the internal heuristics that are pre-programmed in, in the e-program. So the second method typically works better. And in the, in the first run, after the first training, it improves the performance to, to 20,000 from 15,000. And then, then we repeat this process about six times and like in, in the sixth iteration, the, the best method, uh, again, when run in 10 seconds of real time, uh, achieves like 25,000 proofs, solves about 25,000 problems, and improves the original performance by about 70%. So, so, so that's the start of this uh, experiment that, that I'm sort of describing here, and that we have been running for like two two more years, and and this uh, this statistics here. I'm going to write them. Oops, I jumped to something I didn't want to jump to. Oops. Ah, here we are. So uh, so so the statistics here shows you what the e prover was doing, like how how the proof. Uh, was done. So, so this says that the e-prover initially got uh, 342 axioms, like formulas. So, so these are either pre-selected 
uh, by the user, or they can be sort of guessed by some sort of Google search on top of the whole Mizar library. Uh, those 332 got translated to 440 clauses. So, so that's the sort of standard clausification that um, is typically done by the state of the art automated theorem proofs. And then uh, the theorem prover that like 4,000 non trivial loops of its um, algorithm that's called given clause loop in, in case of e prover. And in, in these 4,000 4, iterations, it derived about 65,000 new facts, new, new, new lemmas. So, so the choice point is like in each of these loops, of these given class loops, you need to choose one of the like initially 300 or let's say 440 clauses that quickly grow to, to these 65,000 clauses. And, and decide which one will be the next one with which you will you will do the inference with the previously uh, chosen clauses. So, so that's obviously like an extremely important choice point because like here you can see that ultimately the, the proof produced by e like fully automatically has only 181 steps. So, so in principle, uh, if you chose the right 181 steps, then then you could do the proof in like, like just that number of inferences, not not in 4,000 inferences. So so that that also shows how quickly the the search space grows here. Like in at the end of the uh, of the search space, which here took like 20, 28 seconds, you have 65,000 um, choices. Like you, you, you can choose from 65,000 clauses with, with which you can do the next uh, inference round. So, so, so that's where sort of the machine learning uh, really helps to, to sort of guide this uh, exposed, exposed process. Uh, so, so that's uh, one reasonably quick uh, example. I may try to show you another one. Uh, let's try. Uh, yeah, so, so this one took us seriously longer, like it took almost uh, four minutes and it's also much longer and the the tricks uh, like like the various machine learning uh, tools um, or combination of them were uh, more involved here uh, so um, again i can show you the the proof written written by the human so so it says something like you you have a subset of the real numbers and uh, you, mm, you you are assuming that the subset are the rational numbers between some real numbers A and B. And then you claim that the closure, like the normal topological closure of set A equals the, the closed interval AB. And like the, the Mizar proof at this point is quite involved. So I think it's about 80, 80 lines in in Mizar. So that's sort of starts to be quite time consuming to, to, to formalize such such things. And uh, like again, you can look at the statistics here. So so you start from 100 pre-selected axioms, most likely pre-selected by, by some sort of this sort of premise selection. Uh, it took about 5,000 of, of these inference loops generated about 440,000. Uh, what, what is uh, sort of interesting here is that we, we have this three phase enigma, which is the, the um, it stands for um, uh, like intelligent guiding machine, uh, efficient, uh, efficient uh, inference guiding machine. Uh, so 
instead of just doing like one predictor, we use actually three predictors here, which are differently efficient, differently fast, and differently precise. So uh, the, the sort of fastest one we, we call parental guidance because we, we call it immediately after a clause is being born or proposed to be born. And we basically evaluate a very fast uh, decision tree, like, like an ensemble of decision trees on the two parents of, of the clause that is about to be born. And if, if the parents are not sort of evaluated as, as being good, good parents, the prospective parents, then we tell ePriver don't even try to do this inference. So, so that happens quite often. So, so here we use this like fast heuristic to, to reject about one, one third of the clauses immediately. Uh, what we also do, and that, that's interesting because that's, that's a, like, like a complete logical method, is called aggressive subsumption. And subsumption in first order theorem proving means that we never uh, create a clause for which we already have a stronger version. So, so for example, if you have P of X, where X is universally quantified, you will never generate P of A, where A is some, some constant. It's like, like doing this for the, all the generated clauses is quite expensive because you need to have pretty good indexing to, to sort of quickly look up which clause could be subsuming which other clause. And subsumption is actually NP-complete, like just one-to-one -one clause subsumptions and NP-complete. But like, what, what, what is quite interesting is that uh, like the aggressive subsumption roughly uh, prunes about the same number of clauses as the like very quick machine learning guidance, like this parental guidance. And also the two methods are roughly of the, of the same speed at this point. And so, so, so this is like the first, let's say two phases. Uh, on top of that, we, we run some relatively fast uh, gradient boost trees, which again, pre-select uh, from, from these, let, let's say, remaining um, 200,000 clauses, uh, the ones that still look good. And the last stage uh, is the most expensive, which is like some sort of deep learning, some graph neural network where we put all the clauses that have been considered good already into a graph with the sort of new uh, but good looking clauses. And we look at them as a graph of let's say 1000 or 2000 clauses together. And the graph neural network has been trained to, to sort of uh, do, do several rounds of message passing between, between the clauses in, in the graph and ultimately select the, the, the ones that or rank uh, them according to how uh, good they, they look for, uh, for the uh, theorem proof. So, so, so we really needed all of this to, to, to get this proof like we, we couldn't prove, uh, prove this before. Uh, so that's, let's say, another uh, example. Uh, I will not go into sorry, into many more. Like one uh, one thing I could probably show you is a uh, uh, formal oh, sorry, uh, formalization uh, formalization demo. Uh, let's see how long it will take us. So, so this is uh, an auto formalization demo where we took the whole light uh, fly spec uh, corpus, which is fully formal, but we informalized it. So, so we basically made it uh, produce like the, these um, statements, formulas that are ambiguous, like minus, 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 minus x equals x. And now, now you you are not really sure what what it is, what like what does the minus uh, mean, and uh, 
we in 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 this case the this is no deep learning this is uh probabilistic context free grammars that are trained on the corpus of um, fully disambiguated versus the um, ambiguous um formulas and uh the the trained uh pcfg parser gives us like uh the the most likely parses with respect to the to the corpus and then we we have this hammer the, the sort of relatively strong automated reasoning uh tools on trained on on the on the fly spec corpus that we run to to confirm or try to disprove the uh the conjectures that that are sort of produce the, the disambiguations that are uh that are produced by uh by the probabilistic parser so so that's like a slightly uh different thing that sort of depends on having uh relatively strong automated theorem proven uh i'll i i can show some more demos later if we if we have time left uh I'll say a bit about like this high level, low level, and mid level uh, ways how how we guide automate automated theorem proofs. So so th this premise selection is as I already said, you you have many many facts to choose from, and you you sort of want to choose the right ones that give you a high chance of automated theorem proving, and the the sort of way how to do it that the strongest ways how to do it today are really machine learning the 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 systems that do this that sort of uh choose from the large ip library uh the like reasonable number of facts translate the itp formalism into some easier atp formalism typically first of all logic and then try to prove there and possibly reconstruct the proof back in the proof assistance are called hammers after Larry Paulson's uh, sledgehammer. So about five, six years ago, the systems could do 40 to 45%. And this has been done like for basically all the main systems like Isabel, Mizar, a whole, a whole light, five spec, whole four, and even Cog. Uh, last year, thanks to training the internal machine learning guidance, which I just showed, showed you, we got it to 60% on, on, on desire. So I, I guess uh, we will now have a series of papers where we will show that also on the other corpora, uh, the, 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 let's say 40, 45% can be uh, raised to, 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 to these higher numbers when you do, do the sort of low level guidance of the automated theorem proofs. The, the system, like for premise selection, uh, we have tried a lot of stuff so you can train them by looking at some sort of syntax features, like what are the symbols in the formulas or some walks in the parse trees. You can also look for like more semantic features, like for example, the validity in finite models is an interesting feature of a formula which you will typically not get by some deep learning because the deep learning methods are not uh, as combinatorial as when you run some uh, finite model finder. Uh, a lot of stuff came recently, like this con convolutional uh, recurrent neural networks, graph neural networks, uh, but but also like gradient boosted decision trees, etc. Et, et so so the, the, this is. This is like an open, open field for improving uh, and trying your uh, favorite uh, machine learning method. And obviously, ensembles are also uh, pretty useful. I'll just give this slide, and then we, you, you, you can sort of run these feedback loops there. So, so the oldest one is this machine learner for automated reasoning that I did in two thousand six, where you basically have a set of problems let's imagine like you have like 10,000 problems and then you prove some problems you learn the premise selection from them 
And then thanks to that, you solve some more problems. And then again, you learn the premise selection on top of that, et cetera, et cetera, of nauseam. So, so that really, uh, like here, here you see some, some recent uh, curves uh, from this when we experimented with various um, machine learners in this setting. Like the KNN is K nearest neighbor XG boost, XGB is XG boost, the gradient boosted decision trees parameterized differently. And you can see how many rounds of this proving and learning could be run and how, how much problems they can prove. And this is interesting. Like, e even though the, the set of problems proved eventually plateaus, the, the set of different proofs, which means like the set of different premise sets. Uh, from which we can uh, prove something still grows sort of linearly here, here. and this is some histograms for that. Uh, the low level statistics, uh, so, so the sort of canonical and easily, most easily explainable low level system that we did sort of first is this connection tableau, the link up system, the link connection tableau, where you have you start with a set of first order clauses and you can do the extension and the reduction steps on them and the proof finishes when all branches are closed which means that you have a literal and it's um contradiction in it it's negation on, on, on the branch so on the right hand side here i'm showing a closed connection tableau that you can construct from from this initial set of clauses and uh the advantage of this is that you the, the the partially constructed tableau is is reasonably compact and can be used as some sort of proof state description for for the machine learning tools so so that's what we do like, like at each point when the tableau is partially constructed we ask it like which of these clauses should we use for for an extension step so so you have some set of actions which are the clauses and the proof states to which the actions are applied so so that can be like easily used for some machine learning reinforcement learning uh, setting. And we, we, we did a bunch of iterations starting with this machine learning connection prover and then doing a female code because male code was too maleish. And we ended up with um, an RL code, which is reinforcement learning co connection prover, where we did basically the alpha zero algorithm, the Monte Carlo tree search. Uh, and that sort of does some uh, tree tree based uh, search use, using this uh, heuristic uh, called UCP, which somehow balances the exploration of new actions versus the exploitation of the good uh, good actions, uh, and the, the, this sort of is guided by learning a policy, which is which actions or clauses you should select and and the value which is telling you how good is the currently produced partial tableau and you you sort of repeat this like you you again plug the strained policy and value into into the prover and you prove something and you learn from it and you proof again etc so so these are the monte carlo trees uh, produced by that and, and here you can see like how it behaves. So ultimately after five proving learning iterations, we improve over the original link-up, which can prove 1143 testing problems by a 42 uh, person, because we can, we can prove 1624 of, of the problems. And here you can see how the sort of learning iterations sort of raise uh, the performance so so that's that's the simplest low level uh, setting and and this sort of reinforcement learning has been repeated since then in many other settings like like the e previous setting that i was um uh talking about and like uh it has been improved also in, in this uh lean connection setting uh, so th this is the this is the enigma this, this is the state of the art uh, saturation theorem proves the today we have this multi-phase architecture which sort of balances the 
expanded deep learning with the fast, um, faster methods that do a lot of useful pre-pruning. Uh, th this is the slide that I was already showing, that sort of shows you how far you can get. And like one, I just like, think about the methods that we are using, like, like the deep learning methods, is that they, unlike, for example, transformers, which are remembering the names that you are using, uh, the graph neural network that we use is totally symbol agnostic. It doesn't understand the symbol, so it only looks at the term graphs or the clause graphs, and it only knows that the symbol here is the same as symbol as the symbol there, but it doesn't know that it's plus or a multiplication. So, so we we think and we actually measured that that it generalizes much better than transformers. So, for example, the the graph neural network trained on, on this old Mizar library with which we did most of the uh, Mizar experiments generalizes very nicely to something like 13,000 theorems in a new version of the Mizar library, which contain like 50, more than 50% of them contain new symbols, new concepts, uh, which would like totally kill a transformer because that, that's not how the transformer is trained. But the graph neural network like really has basically the same performance on on the on, on this new library as on, on the on the old uh, library. So that's uh, I think I'm running out of time. Uh, so so that's uh, at least uh, the this sort of high level and low level guidance, and then there, there is this mid level guidance which is sort of something in between. So, so I will skip over it. Then, then there, there are all these interesting like conjecturing and uh, neural rewriting tasks, which I may show you maybe during the question time uh, for, for them also. So, so the, I would say what we, what we today are quite focused on is synthesis of interesting objects like witnesses, like for example, existential witnesses in the proofs or algorithms in the proofs. So, so recently Thibault Gautier, who has done a lot of interesting stuff, has created a system which um, does like invention of algorithms for OEI uh, sequences. So if you give it the primes, it will try to generate an algorithm that um, understands understands primes, and typically, like in in this case, it finds Fermat pseudo primes. Uh, so, so you you could actually show if you if you modify this up to I don't know seventy that uh, you get you get an only prime somewhere. Somewhere down there, uh, it really takes a lot to evaluate. Uh, uh, so um, I, I would say, um, yeah, sorry, it takes a while. Um, oh, it's here. Yeah, so here you can see that three for one, which is not a prime, is uh, is generated by by this program proposed for for this uh, sequence. So. Uh, uh, so, so that's definitely one, one of our current focuses, like, like to generate, um, to, to learn how to synthesize uh, algorithms, how to synthesize um, uh, important existential witnesses, how to synthesize conjectures. Uh, so uh, let me show you, like sometimes, like, like two years ago, we, we even trained like GPT to try to synthesize full proofs. And that was quite fun because some of the things GPT can do and some of the things like it totally doesn't understand. So, so here it, it sort of reasonably proposes the proof structure, but it at some point it needs to do some non-trivial step and it totally misses the, the point of like what, what it should be doing. Like it, it, it generates a syntactically correct lemma, which doesn't really produce, which is incorrect and, and doesn't really produce anything useful for uh, for the proof. But but sometimes like just just running GPT can can do like reasonably interesting things like, for example, generalizing uh, a lemma in the library 
uh, from finite groups to arbitrary groups, which is actually correct. So, so you can you can or uh, like doing funny conjectures like this. So you want to prove that seconds is increasing on some interval, and it conjectures that every differentiable function is increasing. So, so, so but we recently we have a lot of fun with this. Yes, like this. Try to wrap up in the next few minutes, please, if you can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'm, I'm almost there. So I have already show, shown you the sort of auto-formalization demo, which was not based on deep learning. So, so uh, th this is an experiment that we tried like four years ago to, to do recurrent neural networks with attention for auto-formalization. And we, we train on pairs of LaTeX, uh, like tokenized like this and, and Mizar, which is a formal language. And like here you can see, this is probably the last slide, how, how the training proceeds uh, and what, what it produces. So uh, this is the correct Mizar version. And, and these are the outputs of the trained uh, system after let's say 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 training iterations. And you can see that initially, like it's total garbage, basically. And but, but quite quickly, the the out of the, the recurrent neural network here uh, gets to, to produce uh, a formal uh, language MISAR statement that is actually in this case alpha equivalent to to the correct one based based on this slight like, input. So 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 that's what. People are trying to do more and more to, to basically train such systems that would turn your LaTeX into your uh, formal mathematical statement. Uh, there, there are some challenges and bats of which some we have already sort of completed and lots of acknowledgements, references. And we have a nice conference uh, called AITP Artificial Intelligence and Fear Improving, which is happening this year in September in in France. So if you're interested, like you can probably watch it online this year. So that's it. Um, thanks for your attention, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Joseph. Let's thank the speaker. It's great. Um, and yeah, we're we're a bit into what should be the q a session but that's okay we can we can take a few minutes to do some some questions so um if anyone wants to raise their hand ask a question uh i think i see valeria do you want to ask a question yeah um thanks joseph that that was really very good i i kind of got to, to understand a bit more how different players uh come into this but my question is is about is from a, lo a logic point of view. So, you know, there's enough, I mean, there's too many different theorem proving systems and they don't talk to each other very well, as we know. And, and so the question I have, and, and there are some kind of debates going on, right? There's the debate between Koch and, and Lean, well, kind of being classical logic and intuitionistic logic as a basis. And so I wondered if you have your own view on, on and, and now you kind of showed the, the, I mean, the link up thing, which kind of, it's it, it's good because it can do some of the non-classical logic. So at least it's good for me for doing linear logic and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I wondered if, if, if out of this whole, and, and you know, from most of the stuff that you're talking about seems to be agnostic on what the logic is. So I wondered, you know, what is your conclusion along these lines? I mean, yeah, that's the question. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh uh, yeah, I, I I guess you already got it. Like I'm I'm pretty agnostic as as long as you have uh, some search, uh, some sort of deductive search in in some reasonable logic. I, I think the, these combinations of learning with the deductive search are pretty agnostic. They 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 will work pretty generally. Uh, so, so that's one part of the answer. I, I guess the the other part you are asking is like if I have personally some preference for uh, for uh, for for these logics and and systems, like um, and I would say I've been 
uh, like initially I just studied mathematics and I, when I saw the Mizar system being done in the setting that was taught to me as a, as a mathematician, like some basically first of the logic and sub theory, it was what, what I could understand. And the, the fact that they could, could do things in, in that setting was good for me because I, I could basically translate it for, for these automated theorem theories. But, but then I worked for six years in the Netherlands with the Koch people. And like, you know, I, I understand their point of view. I like constructive mathematics, intuitionistic mathematics has a lot of interesting properties, right? Like you have this uh, proofs of, as programs, like, like you, you, you have all, 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 all these ideas about program extraction from, from proofs. Uh, and, and obviously that there are like these deep philosophical uh, things about why you should be doing intuitionistic proofs. But, but then again, like you, you, you get systems like Lean, which were originally uh, even having two branches, like we had the homotopy type theory branch and, and, and the classical branch. And then this somehow um, evolved, like, like you have people like Kevin Buzzard who, who says that he doesn't care about intuitionism. <laughs> um, then, then you have systems like Isabel, which even doesn't go into the full power of set theory, like, like the, the sort of set theory there is, is limited, but then again, they say that they work in some sort of sweet spot of, of where you get most automation. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, the spectrum is really, really wide. And I, um, I, I, I like, because I quite semantically understand the, the set theoretic uh, setting, I, I quite like it. And I think that you can do even when you are doing a lot of other stuff, like let's say homotopy type theory, your, your guiding intuition or your guiding models are very often grounded in set theory. So, so you can do like these things, like for example, Mohan, Mohan Ganeshalingam was doing in, in his PhD thesis. Well, like you can say that ultimately you may be in some set theory, but you have some sort of layers of abstractions, like, like, like some sort of little theories, et, et cetera, where let's say ultimately everything is grounded in, in, in some set theory, but you, you may not even have to say like, what is your particular construction of real numbers? Like, so, so um, my, my preference is for something like, for example, Mohan was doing, and I would say the Mizar people and the little theories people are also doing it. And I'm not, not, not particularly seeing, um, like, like I, I've seen also some disadvantages of working, for example, in dependent type theory. Uh, so, yeah. So, so my my preference is more in in some sort of soft types and um, uh, like simpler systems than going into some more involved, like, let's say, dependent type theory systems. But that's just my preference, and doing all these things is pretty much independent of my preference. Thank you. That, that's very, I mean, it's very good to hear kind of uh, different voices on, on the debates and stuff. I have another question, Evan, but, you know, I'll let other people go first if they have, if there are other questions. Um, David, did I see a hand up from someone at the office? Uh, yeah, actually, I had a quick question. Um, uh, how long do you think it'll be before um, so a, a working mathematician will actually want to use some kind of automated uh, assistance from a some, from one of these things. Uh, so some mathematicians will never use them, <laughs> uh, but um, I would say it's it's really becoming promising in the sense that after people like George Gontier and Tom Hales did these breakthrough projects like uh, Flyspec and uh, the other theorem, uh, there, there, there is now quite a strong um, community around the Lean system. Like let, you could say that it's led by Kevin Buzzard, but you have like very, very strong formalizers like Mario Carneiro, 
helping with the with the whole process and advising the mathematicians. And I, I would say uh, that the fact that these are really like research level mathematicians who are further advertising in their community is is pretty promising. And uh, it's it's hard to say like, like what well, depends on how you exactly frame your questions. Like, like if the question could be like, for example, when will more than 50% of like research, new research result be, be formalized in some system? And that that thing, like if I if I was supposed to give you some number, I would say that it's probably at least 20 years away from now. But 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 I, I think it's it's sort of coming. Like, like people were quite uncertain for quite a long time, but 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 I think it's 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 becoming more and more certain that such a moment will come and it will not be too too far from now. Oh, very interesting. Thanks. Uh, James M, I think you've had your hand up for a while. Do you want to ask? Yeah, I was curious. Uh, you were talking about uh, as you expanded, you were getting more and more proofs that you could do. I was curious about the proofs that you could already do. Did it learn alternate uh, methods of proving them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that that happens really very often. Uh, like one uh, one one simple uh, sort of demonstration of that. Uh, let me try to find it here. Is Oh, this graph. So, so here at, at the end, so, so, so this, this is just the premise selection when, when we have this data set of 2000 problems and we, we prove, then we learn the, the premise, premises from which you could more easily prove the, the, the theorems and, and then you try to prove again. So, so this shows you that for, uh, Mm -hmm. For for some of these, you you really get like fifty six different proofs, and and here by different, I only mean that you prove them from different premises, from from different assumptions. Uh, so because the the formal libraries are are sort of derivation graphs, like like large derivation graphs, the the more and the smarter you are. The, the more you can expand the, the, the derivation graph. So, so for example, initially you might be able, only able to prove your lemma from its immediate parents in the derivation graph. But, but if you sort of learn better, and especially if you also do the low level learning, then you will be able to expand to the parents of the parents, et cetera, et cetera. And, and you will be able to, to do longer and longer proofs. So definitely this happens a lot. And it also brings a lot of interesting issues because we, we do not really know yet well how to learn when we have multiple proofs of the same theorem. Like how, how should we, whether we should choose only one proof and somehow make the proving style across the whole library maximally consistent so that it sort of doesn't confuse the machine learners or whether we should just learn from all proofs that we have, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, so the, these are very interesting issues. Thank you very much. Did, were you able to mind it, anything that was really surprising that a human wouldn't have proved uh, oh. something basic this way? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That also happens quite quite often. So we, for, for example, in in this uh, link, um, like it, it it goes back like twenty years to my master's thesis when we found um, alternative proof. But here, uh, the the Mises theorem, which is uh, something that somebody called a Car Carmichael's uh, theorem. Uh, on prime divisors, uh, so so you, you you have two primes and m divides fib n, which is the nth Fibonacci number, and then you say that it means that uh, m doesn't divide uh, Fibonacci r, where r is smaller uh, than than n. So 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 the proof in written by the human is pretty long, and we couldn't get it from 
in the way in which the human wrote it. We couldn't get it by the automated theorem pure. Uh, so it was 122 lines. But we, we found much simple proof uh, from different premises uh, because uh, we, we just found a lemma which says that Fibonacci M GCD Fibonacci N equals Fibonacci M GCD N. And once you have this lemma, you, you can prove it much faster. You, uh, you, you don't need induction, like everything go, goes, goes very fast. So, so this is really a very interesting effect that we have been getting for like the last 10, 15 years with these systems. Because the automated theorem proofs are quite brute force and are not very good at getting very long proofs. They strongly prefer sh short proofs. Each time you that there is an opening like this, each time there is a lemma in the library which allows you to do a shorter proof than the one which the human wrote, you, you will almost always uh, get that sort of new proof, new simpler proof invented by, by the AI TP systems. So yes, th this happens quite often. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the live stream now. Um, so let let's uh, let's thank the speaker again. So thanks for. Um, and I, there are a few questions left. So if you have time, you know, sit.